Okay, so when it comes to solving quadratic equations, which is our main goal now for the rest of today, here's a set of steps on how to do this. First thing we want to do is take our equation, get everything to one side so it's equal to zero. And you want to make sure here, I should point out, make sure you have a quadratic. That means you need to have something like, you know, you need to have an x squared in there somewhere. So you get everything moved to one side, all right? You're looking at a quadratic equation. And then there's going to be one of three different ways we're going to solve this quadratic. The first one is if we're missing the constant term. So what I, what I think I'll do is next to these, I'll put an example of what I mean by missing a constant term. So like on this one, if you had something like this, x squared minus 3x equals 0. So notice that it's missing, it's missing that like plus c in here. Do you all recognize that? Yay, nay? Yes? Okay. So if we're missing the constant, all we have is the x squared term and then the x term, then what we're going to do is we're going to solve that by factoring. And I'm going to go through these. If we're missing the x term, so if we have something like this, x squared minus, uh, let's say, 4 equals 0. If we have something like that where we're missing the x term but we have x squared and a constant, then we're going to use this thing called the square root method. And if we're not missing anything at all, something like this, x squared minus 5x, let's say plus 4 equals 0. So we have the x squared term, we have an x term, and we have a constant all together. Then we're either going to use the AC method or the almighty quadratic formula, all right, which I will show you. We haven't done this yet. All right? But the idea is, is, is that we have a systematic approach to solving quadratics. Um, something, something that will work fast and, you know, as fast as possible for us. If you, if you go off of these three cases, then that'll get you to the answer as fast as possible, all right? So you all ready to go through and do these? See some examples worked? Okay. All right, so let's do our first one here. So I think the easiest out of all of these is that first case, case A, where we're missing a constant. So our first example, let's solve this. Um, 3x squared minus 7x equals 0. All right, is that a quadratic equation? Yes? yes? Just for the sake of making sure you understand what's A, what's B, and what's C in this problem. A is 3. A is 3. B is, 7. B is negative 7, and C is zero. 0, since it's not there. So whenever C is 0, that means you're missing the x term. All right? I mean, sorry, missing the constant. So this is case A. I'm missing a constant. I don't have a constant. I mean, yes, 0, but something other than 0. Um, so what is the method for doing this? Nope. GCF. GCF, greatest common factor. So look at that right there. You have a GCF, don't you? What can you pull out of both of these? Just x, right? And you'll be left with 3x minus 7 equals 0. And now you can just set each factor to 0, can't you? So you set x equal to 0 and you set 3x minus 7 equal to 0. So we've done, we've done that already, haven't we? Something like that? So what are our two solutions here? x is 0, right? And then this one, we'd have to move things around, but we get 7 over 3. So we'd add 7 to both sides and divide by 3. Let's do another one like this.
Elizabeth? Where's Elizabeth? No Elizabeth? No Elizabeth? Devon? No? Anissa? Anissa? Anissa. Anissa. I said it right the second time, right? Anissa. All, all on one side. Okay, so you recognize this is a quadratic equation, right? Okay, so when you move them to all, all to one side, um, which side? Do you care? Do you want to move them to the left? Okay, so you'll subtract 125x here. And those can't combine together, right? Because one is x squared, the other one is x. So that's right. Okay, so we are in the case where we are... Let's see, you can keep going. Tell me what A, B, and C are for this one, Nisa. Um, a is five. five. Negative 125. Zero. So we're missing the constant. So that means we should be able to get this with GCF. So what is our GCF here? Um, oh, five. five X. Okay. And then here we'll have left right here. X and then minus 25 and then equals zero. Okay, what do you do at that stage? 5x equal to zero and x minus 25 equal to zero. And so what is our solution for this one? x is zero and here x is 25. All right, that makes sense? So start out. It's quadratic, move everything to one side. We're missing the constant term, GCF, set each factor to zero. And that's the way every single one will, will work if you're missing a constant term, right? So there's not a whole lot new. So are we ready to move on to the next type? Okay, the next type, we are not missing the constant term, we're actually missing the X term. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's start with this one. All right, Gabriella. Where's Gabriella? You I thought you raised your hand. Gabriella, I haven't called on you, right? Okay. Um, Gabriella, is this is, is is this a quadratic equation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you identify? Is well, everything's on one side, right? Mm -hmm. So, can you identify A, B, and C? A is five. Five. Zero, because zero, you don't have an X term, right? C, we'll, we'll say negative 30, right? Because it's got the minus here. Okay, everyone got that? So are we missing the constant term this time? No, we're missing the X term. See, the X term's missing. We don't have an X term. So for this, this is case B. We will use the square root method. Now, we haven't talked about this method. So I'm introducing it now. The square root method works like this. It only works when you have this, okay? You have to have this to use this method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate the x squared term. That means that you're actually gonna move that 30 back over to the other side, okay? So I'm gonna add 30 to both sides. If I add 30, I get this, right? Okay, and I'm trying to get x squared by itself. So now what I'm gonna do is divide both sides by five. If I divide both sides by five, what do I get? x squared equals six. 30 divided by five is six, all right? Now here's, here's the last step, but very important. At this juncture, what you'll do is you will take the square root on both sides of the equation. Okay, so you come in and take the square root on both sides. Now, the idea here is that when you take the square root of something that's being squared, these basically kill each other off and leave you with just x. Now on this side, we did this on our calculator a second ago, didn't we? But there's one catch. 
There's something I left out. And on a test that would count me a lot, that would uh, cost me a lot of points. And that is whenever you come in and take the square root on both sides, when you do that, like we did that, right? We started here and then we took the square root on both sides. You have to do plus or minus. Was that your question or? That's what I was going to say. You have to do plus or minus. And the, and the reason is that there are two different numbers that square to give you six. Well, if I write this one down, x squared equals four. Two squared is four, right? But negative two times negative two is also four. So we'll always get two answers whenever we take the square root on both sides. So we will have here plus or minus. Then on your calculator, what do you get? Square root of six, 2.45. So th that's two different answers, positive 2.45 and negative 2.45. Yes? So what's the difference between this and the previous problem that you said your calculus didn't always mess up with? Between this one? Um, the one that I said my calculus students messed up on, there was an x on this side, and my students divided both sides by x. Like here we divided both sides by 5. Okay, which is okay because 5 is not 0, but when you divide both sides by x, x could be 0. And that's bad. So we never divide it by a variable. Does that answer your question? Okay, yes. Yes. How do we know that b is 0? Because there's no x term. So all quadratics, all quadratics look like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So it's some number in front of x squared plus some number in front of x, plus some number by itself. Do you see a number in front of x, just x over here? You see x squared, right, in a number, but do you see a number in front of x? No, right? There's no number in front of x. So that means there's really like a zero. I mean, if I wanted to, I could rewrite this. I mean, that's the same thing, isn't it? This and this are the same? Like if I put zero in front of x, there would still be nothing there, right? So wouldn't that be confusing? It would be confusing, but I'm trying. This would turn into a zero, okay. right? I'm just trying to show why the b is zero. B is zero because there's no x's here. No x's means it's not here, which means it looks like that. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do another one of these. How about negative 2x squared um, minus 7 equals 0? Marcus, you've already participated today, I think. Victor? All right, Victor, you're up. You would move the negative 7 over. Okay, so we are, you're looking at this, you're saying it's quadratic, right? You moved everything to one side. All that's been done in your head already. Yeah. You already recognize that this is the second case where you're missing the x term, yes. right? Uh, just for the sake of doing it, what's my a, b, and c here, Marcus? A would be negative 2. Negative 2. B is zero. negative 7. Okay, so that's if we're just kind of keeping track of things. So we're missing the x term. So you said move the 7 to the other side? Yes. So I'm going to add 7, right? So I get negative 2x squared equals 7. Okay, trying to get the x squared by itself. So what would be next? You would divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. All right, so let's see what we get here. x squared equals 7 divided by negative 2. Now what? Then you would square, root. square root both sides. So I take the square root of this side, square root of this side, plus or minus, right? Because anytime we take the square root, we have to do plus or minus. And we get x equals plus or minus. And then I guess you could try that on your calculator. What are you getting? Should be getting that domain error thing. You should recognize Yeah, because it's a negative underneath the square root. So you're trying to take the square root of a negative number. And that means you're trying to go outside the fishbowl, all right? You've got to stay in the fishbowl. So we will say here, no real solution. There's no real solutions.
to this. There are solutions, but you've got to go outside the fishbowl. Uh, I won't care, but technically there are solutions, but they are not real numbers. They are what we call complex numbers, which involve imaginary stuff. But, so there are no real solutions, but there are actually two complex solutions to this. What if we see like the square root of negative one? No real solution. You can put I, but I mean, again, that, remember how I said you, we just kind of like let you look in the window and close it, you know? Um, what does it mean? Like, what does I mean, you know? Maybe we put I plus five points on the test. Yeah. You can write me a story about how you'd like to leave the fishbowl. How about that? Um, See, it's too, it's too hard to keep me contained when it comes to this topic. So you have no choice but to hear this now. There's a reason why we don't introduce you to imaginary numbers here. Okay? It's not because we don't want to. It's because most students at this level, even, in, even if you were in the 14-14 STEM math class, we, we don't go very far. And the reason is because most students at that level can't well, they can't do it. Even if you've taken Cal 3, you still don't do imaginary numbers, okay? And the reason is because of this. Look, we've, we've looked at this before. Just bear with me for a second. We all know that if we graph this visually, this is a... Parabola? Uh, I don't know. You know, just look at it and think about it for a second. It's a line. It's linear, right? This is like y equals mx plus b. If it were squared here, it'd be a problem. But this is a good old-fashioned line, isn't it? Good old-fashioned line? Yes? And the way, we could, the way I first introduced this idea is I said, look, what we can imagine is that we have like inputs and outputs. We have in and we have out, right? Like if I plug in 0 right here for x, right, what's my y going to be? One, okay, if I plug in one for x, what's my y gonna be? It's gonna be four, right? If I plug in two for x, my y is gonna be seven, right? Agreed? Mm -hmm. So what, I, what we did is we said, okay, we're gonna have one axis here, this is our input, one axis is our output, yes? So this right here, we look at it like a point. Zero, and then up one, that's a point, right? And then the next point would be this one, one, four. So the input is one, the output is four. And that's a point here. If we do all these, we get this straight line, right? Well, it's supposed to go through that point. Yes? So one way you could visualize this is that what we're doing is we're starting in a number line and we're ending in a number line. So watch. I plug in zero, right? Here's zero. And where does zero get taken? To the number one, right? And then where does the number one get taken? To the number four, right? So this is one axis here, which is my input, and one axis, which is my output. So we're visualizing that by putting one axis this way and one axis this way. Do you all see that? Like this one is that one, and this one is that one. So when I go out one, it gets spit out to four, right? The reason we don't do imaginary numbers is because if you try and do this with imaginary numbers, you actually to visualize an imaginary number, you need two axes for the input, and you also need two axes for the output. So a complex number lives in two-dimensional space. It gets spit through a function to another point somewhere in two-dimensional space. So how many dimensions would you need in order to visualize it? Two for the in, two for the out. So how many is that total? Four dimensions. How's that going to work out for you? Can anybody here visualize a function in four-dimensional space? There's a movie that does this. Right? I mean, it's not happening. We live in three-dimensional space. That's why even calculus students don't deal with this until after they've gone through calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, because then they're mathematically mature enough. Their minds can think in a way that, okay, now let's start talking about functions in four-dimensional space. So in here, it's, you know, you want to put I on there, great, but like, 
you have no idea that I, I is right there, right? You didn't know that. See, that's more important to me is that I is right there. Okay, two I is right here. Okay, I mean, and so it's, we're cheating ourselves to act like we're doing anything really significant with imaginary numbers in here, so that's why we're not dealing with it. No real solution, that's what we were right, okay? All right, sorry. <clears throat> Some of the most brilliant mathematicians ever were blind. Math, they were blind from birth. And that's because they don't live in that same physical construction of, of space that we live in, right? Because you start thinking about, you know, n-dimensional space, 10 dimensions, 13 dimensions. All right, let's, let's keep going, sorry. All right, let's solve this one. Um, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. All right, so this is or is not a quadratic, Dyson? Dyson? Yeah. It is a quadratic, right? So we move everything to one side, which is done already. Are we missing the constant term? No. We're not missing anything here, right? Everything is here. You can tell me, right, Dyson, A, B, and C? Okay, so what's A here? 2, B is negative 3, and C is 1. Okay, so we have everything there, right? Why have I not looked at the case where A is 0? Because then it wouldn't be quadratic, right? Because if that wasn't here, it wouldn't be quadratic. It would be linear, and then we'd do it a completely different way. But we've looked at when these two are 0, right? Here, they're, they're all here now. So when we do this, we have two options, AC method or quadratic formula. So let's try the AC method. Let's just try it, and let's see if it works. So for our AC method, what we're going to do is factor this side. So Dyson, what goes up here? 2, two and here, negative 3. And then Dyson thinks about it, and then I'm sure we'd get that eventually, yes? OK. And then you go through and try and factor this out. So I'm going to, again, skip this step of where we would do the four terms and split it and do our grouping and just go right to what it would be, OK? So it would be, and I actually do need to think about this for a second, we would have 2x, x, uh, 1 minus, minus 1, yeah. Okay, so that's what we would have if we went through this step. So there's some dot dots in here that I didn't, I didn't show that step, right? Maybe it takes us a few minutes to do that. Okay, now once we're here, what do we do? Set each equal to zero, right? That was the whole idea behind the factoring is to get the, to be able to use that um, zero factor property. So we set each of these to zero. And we'll get two answers, a half and one. Okay. That is how we handle when they're all there, nothing is missing using the AC method. Is that pretty straightforward? All right, so I'm going to change one little thing on the problem now. Ready? I'm going to change this to a minus. And let's work the problem now. Starting with a new one now. So we're starting to get low here. Aaron? Aaron, 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 no Aaron. Tanisha? What's the big difference here on this one, Tanisha? The negative on this C, right? This right here is now negative one, so we still have all three, nothing's missing. All right, so Tanisha, if we try AC method, what are our, what are our numbers that go here? Negative 2 up here and negative 3. And what do you think about that, Tanisha? Two numbers that multiply to be negative 2 and add up to be negative 3. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to. 
Oh no, I did start it. I don't, I don't remember starting that. I had a weird dream last night. Woke me up at four o'clock in the morning. I couldn't go back to bed. You ever have that, like, that dream, that, that one dream a year that just kind of messes you up? Or are you having them every night? No? I had one where my, have y'all ever seen the poltergeist? Like the original poltergeist where the daughter gets like these spirits in the house, like take her and she's like inside the TV. Yeah. I had this dream that my daughter got basically same idea in some sort of weird way in our old house. It was, it was weird. But today's her birthday, so I don't know. It was just kind of a weird kind of dream to have. <sighs> All right, so I'm tired is what I'm getting at. I'm just stalling. Tanisha's getting these numbers for us, right? Can't, right? You're not having any luck with that. You're not able to come up with these two numbers. Try as much as you might. You can't. And up to this point, we would say that it's prime, right? That's what we would say. But now we're dealing with an equation. And when we're, when we're dealing with an equation, we have to incorporate one more try, one more attempt to try and factor this or to, to get the solutions. And that is using the quadratic formula. And this is the almighty quadratic formula. I know most of you have seen this, so I'm just going to write it down. It says, if we have a quadratic equation, any quadratic equation that anyone and it ever gives you, okay? And there you are. You're sitting there. You're looking at it. You want the answers to this? Here they are. The answers will be, and there's no work that has to be done. This is just a formula that you plug things in and you get the answers. All right, so here's, here's what they are. The solutions to this are going to be, I'm gonna put here then, the x's, the solutions are negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, the entire quantity divided by two times a. That is your quadratic formula. Does that look familiar? Yes. Yes? Okay. This is our quadratic formula. It has been handed to us at some point way back when there was like these tablets that were found in a cave that had all the mathematical formulas that were given to us and this was on it. So as long as we know A, B, and C, we got answers, all right? I will not have you memorize this. I will provide that to you on the test, all right? So let's try this, Tanisha. We're, gonna, we're going to just plug numbers in and chug the answer out, okay? We call this a plug and chug problem. We're looking at this. We are saying our answers are, all right, let's look at this first piece, Tanisha. The first piece of this formula is negative b. What is that for us here in this problem? Our b is negative 3, right? So b for us is negative 3. But in the formula, we want negative b, which would be the opposite, right? Negative, we would be taking negative of a negative. So you put positive 3. Does, it, does everyone follow that? Yeah. Yeah, be real careful with that. This is saying take the opposite of what b is. If b is negative 3, then in our formula, this is going to be positive 3 is the first thing we put. Okay? Then plus or minus, right? Now, the plus or minus, that's why we practiced it earlier, just a little while ago, is because of this formula. This is where we were headed. Okay, Tanisha, I'm going to keep going with you. Since you couldn't come up with those numbers, I'm going to make you have to do this, even though the numbers didn't exist. Okay, so Tanisha, now we need to do b squared. Negative 3 times negative 3, which will be positive 9, right? So this number right here, b squared, will always be positive, regardless of what this is. If this is negative 3, negative 3 times negative 3 would be 9. If it was positive 3, it would be 3 times 3 would be 9. So this, this part right here of the quadratic formula will always be positive. So in this case, it's 9, right? Okay, minus. Now I'm going to write this down. 4, and I'm going to do it in parentheses. Here's my A and here's my C. Tanisha, what goes here? 2, and then C, 
negative 1. Okay. Then all of that, the whole thing, big old division bar all the way across over 2 times 2 times 2. All right, Tanisha, you're off the hook. All right, so that's just plugging everything in. Now we got to make sure that we do this on our calculator properly. And I'll tell you, um, the quadratic formula is great, but you have to be able to use it properly. Right? So if you get to here and you still can't get this computed right, you lose a lot of points because we're not asking you to do any factoring or anything else. We're asking you just to apply a formula. So make sure you practice it enough where you don't make the little mistakes. And the biggest mistakes that I see occur right here. That's where most people make the mistake, right there. So I'm going to give you a shortcut way of doing this, all right? Here's the shortcut. Here's how it goes. We're just going to rewrite everything. I'm going to write that 9, and then on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and do 2 times 2 is 4. We need to figure out what all this is, okay? Right here. So the shortcut is this. Let's take care of the sign first. Is it going to be 9 plus something or minus something? All right? The way you do that is you count how many minus signs you see. How many do you see? Two. Two. Okay? If it's an even number, then it's going to be plus. All right? Think of, think of it this way. Negative times negative would be positive. positive, right? So if you see two negatives, it's going to be plus. What if you see three negatives? It's going to be minus. What if you see one negative? It's going to be minus. Okay, so there's only, you're only going to ever see two, like if it's here and there, right? Or maybe negative and negative here. But does that make sense? That's an easy way to do it, I think. Hopefully, you'll find it easy. So I'm going to have a plus or a minus here. Plus. plus. Okay, now, what number goes here? We'll just multiply these numbers together and don't worry about the sign. Four times two times one. Eight, right? So I'm not, once I figure out if it's plus or minus by counting the number of negatives, plus, right, minus, minus, that's going to be plus, then I don't worry about the signs anymore. I just do the numbers. 4 times 2 times 1. That gives me 8. So it's going to be 9 plus 8. All right? Now, this is 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 8 is 17, right, and over 4. And now you will go on your calculator and you will get me the two answers from here. So this is what we started when we began, right? We have the plus and we have the minus. So I need you on your calculator to do two plus the square root of 17, sorry, three plus the square root of 17. And then divide that by four I'm getting this answer up here, 1.78. And then when I do it the other way, I'm getting negative 0 Okay. Now, it turns out that this quadratic formula would have worked for every problem that we did. You know, we took our break and we came back and told you there are three cases, right? We could have done this formula on all, every problem we've done. And some people are just like, I'm just going to use a quadratic formula. Like, I just love the formula, I'm just going to use it. You can do that, I have no problem with that. The thing is, it takes time and there's, you know, there's room for error in here. So I like breaking it down with the three cases that I gave you. Um, let's do another one with this quadratic formula. Let's see if you can do it. I'm not going to work through it. I want you to work through it on your own and see if you can get it. Did you not get those answers? What? Uh, hold on. OK, who got the same answers I got? OK. That makes me feel better. Okay, so what were you saying? Wasn't the, the three negative? Yeah, so three plus or minus. It's not the square, so what happens in the negative? 
I did, okay, so first I did 3 plus root 17 and divided it by 4. And I did 3 minus root 17 divided by 4 and got this. Wait. There was not. Remember the formula, the formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? So it was minus, but what was b? b was negative 3, right? And that's why minus minus became plus, which is why we left it as 3. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought we understood that earlier, but that was, that make it clear now? Okay. <clears throat> Let's do another one. Um, how about solving um, 3x squared minus 7x plus I gotta make sure it doesn't factor. Four. Okay, so I, I'll just tell you right now, this shouldn't factor, all right? This is 12 and negative seven. I do not believe that's happening. Ah, oh, wait, hold on. Negative three and negative four. Mm -hmm. Crap, okay, let's change it to five. Let's change this to five, which makes this 15. Let's make sure that doesn't work. One and 15 won't work, two and nothing, three and five won't work. Okay, yeah, that won't work. Change it to uh, plus five here. So you have no choice in this one but to use a quadratic formula, so. I'll help you out by at least telling you, uh, listing out what A, B, and C are. What, what is A here? 3, B, negative 7, C is 5. Okay. So go through that, and when you get your answer, raise your hand. <clears throat> when you get your answers, there should be two of them. Raise your hand, and I'll check, and I'll let you know if you got them. Talk to your neighbor if you need to. Help each other out. I have a question. Yes. You got a negative? Yeah, so that would be imaginary. Or, so yeah, that, so that's gonna mean no solutions. So. Yeah, okay. Work it out, everyone work it out there. I wanna make sure. 49, four, two, three. Ah. Yeah, cause that'll be 60, right? Yeah, yeah 60, 60 in there, okay, there. yeah. Let's make sure everyone gets to it. I'm going to put another one up here to work if you get that one.
got that second one? Yeah. Let me cut. Yeah, if you get the second one, let me know. So for the positive, I got a 0.288, and then for the negative. 5.21. Okay, good. Yep. Do you, no solution on the first? Yeah, you should be getting no. Uh, this one, this would be 49, though. Because you're squaring it, remember? And the formula is squared. I, I should have put the formula up here, but. The first one should be the fishbowl problem where you're not able to get an answer. And the second one, your signs are backwards on that. It should be positive for the point two, and the second one should be positive 5.21. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Did you divide no, by doing, negative uh, four? That's the plus. That's the solution. Oh, with the, plus. okay, got you, got you. Okay, so be careful, like on the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I understand what you're doing there. Is anyone having an issue I can come by and help you with? All right. So let me see the quadratic. So you have negative 11 plus or minus 121 minus. So was that a minus? Or are you doing minus or a plus there? Well, you sure? What did you had negative two for A and negative three for C and then the negative four. So three negatives total, yeah, minus. There it is, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So same thing on that, be careful. Like if you write down the test, it looks like you're saying negative 5.21, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Where I set the, the square root for the, the negative part, mm -hmm. put it at negative. How would I do that if it's already a negative on that, on that side? So you'd subtract it. So I just go ahead and subtract it right away. So what did you? Okay, so you got 132 in here. How did you get 132? Which one are we working on? The second one? The first. One. The second one. Okay, so let me see. You had. B squared. Oh. Did you? S no, I, I, I think you used the wrong one, right? Yeah. I th did you use A squared? Well, I used the, the B. I used 11. Okay. Yeah. But for that part, like just for future reference, like like so when I put the 132 square rooted or you know square rooted, and uh -huh. then I put that as a negative, right? I, I go ahead and still subtract. You then know? you, if the number in front was minus, like negative, then you would subtract instead of bad. Okay, I'm going to write down what you get on the quadratic formula for these. Let's see, negative b, so 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. What is that? 121797. Someone check that, make sure that looks right.
Now, I'm not getting the decimals here. I'm taking you to this point. You should be able to get the decimals from here. This one here should be no solution, no real solution, because you're getting a negative underneath the root. So that's no real solution here. And then on that one, <clears throat> you do have two answers. What were they, like point, 0 0.28, and then the other one was like 5.21? So those should be your two answers here. So, so look, yes, go ahead. Uh, can you show me how you got to 0 0.28? I guess Did you have 97 under here? Yeah, no, I know, I have all that. But, um, okay, so uh, the 0 0.28. So, okay, so when I go 97, and I take the root. root and am I adding that negative? Then you're going to subtract 11. Subtract 11. Right. So you're keeping this positive on your calculator. Okay. We're going to do the plus first, right? You have to do both cases. Yeah, we'll work through it when I end class. We'll, we'll go through it. Um, so on these, I think it's really just a matter of like, here, you know, you have the formula. You've got to practice it. Like, you need to do repetition. Don't just do one or two of these and be like, yeah, I got it. Okay, because when you get to a test, you want to be like very proficient with, with all the different weird things that can happen with these signs in here. Let me take a look at what the homework looks like for you here for this. So we talked about at least, let me get this out of here. Okay, so here's the homework. So the first part of the homework uh, for solving quadratics, um, this is all pretty much just calculator work, this first problems. Then it actually tells you on this one, use the square root method. So you can see on this that you're missing the x term, right? You're missing the x term. So you'd move the 49 over, take square root on both sides, get your answer. So all of these are gonna work like that. Now, what do you think you're going to have to do on numbers 9 and 10? Clear the fractions out first. You're going to have to clear the fractions, then start doing the method. Then the rest of these are solving with the quadratic formula. And just follow the method. Get everything over to one side. You know, what's A, what's B, what's C? And then start cranking your formula out. So this is a good, you know, 10 problems of practice here. Um, let's make this a take-home quiz, these 10 problems right here from the homework to be turned in next class. I want to make sure everybody here practices this, I can't, because I can't stress it enough. As we move forward, I don't want you taking a test and getting these wrong. I mean, you should get these right. It's a formula. You just need to know how to apply it correctly. That means you need to get good on your calculator, whatever calculator you're going to use for the test. <clears throat> is the one you need to be practicing with. How do you want the answers for those? Like Decimals. The formula? What's that? The quadratic formula answers, how do you want those written? Uh, you know how on my paper I put the positive, I put Just the box your two answers. So like you should, on that last one, you should have had like x is 0 0.028, and then x is whatever it was, 5.21, like, like this. Now when you're doing your work, you know, if you want to do like, you know, here's my plus and here's my minus, you know, that's fine. What I would get away from, okay, what I would not do is try and do all the calculation just on your calculator without writing anything down. I would not do that. I would at least, like for the test, like let's say this problem here. You know, your A is negative 1, your B is uh, 8, and your C turns out to be negative 10. I would at least on the uh, test get used to writing down that first, that first piece like this, write that down. Because if you get the answer wrong and you don't have any work, you're not getting any credit at all. But if you at least write it down and I say, yes, they did negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Yes, everything is in the right place. Everything's where it belongs. Now the rest of it was just 
computational error, you'll get, more, you'll get some credit as opposed to nothing. So go at least this step, all right? So turn that in next class, your name on it, beginning of class, just turn them in, okay? And we'll call it a day. I, your homework is to do this. That was the end of that homework assignment. And the one before it, the homework assignment before that was the one on solving by factoring. Jeez, if it'll ever come up. This one right here, which last class I had told you, hold, hold off on this one. Now you can do it. So homework solving equations by factoring. And then the one after that, which is uh, solving quadratics by the root method and by uh, the quadratic formula. All right, everyone. Have a good day. We'll see you Wednesday. Yes. Let me turn my camera off so.